What's better than cars and explosions? I don't know, but today we're going to find out because in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do both cars and explosions and animate them in Blender. We're going to learn about VDBs, compositing, materials, setting up the camera with parenting, and loads of other stuff. And I'm going to pack it all into a nice beginner friendly format that you can all follow along. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start off at Django FX. This website, they make um, software for doing lots of volumetric simulations. And they've actually given away some of these um, different free simulations for you to use in any project. I'll pop the link down below so you can download these as well. But I think we'll start off and we'll find this one that says ground explosion here. So if you just click where it says download, it'll take you to this Mediafire website and then press the download link up here. Once you've downloaded it, you'll have a folder in your downloads folder, a zip file. So you need to unzip it. And in the folder that says ground explosion, you'll see they've actually done like a little MP4 video so you can see a quick preview of what it looks like. And then if you go to the VDB folder itself, you'll see all of these frames here. Each file equates to a frame in the video. If you see my blender, I've got keyboard shortcuts in this bottom left corner here. Uh, press A to select everything, then X to delete everything. We're going to press Shift and A to add, and we're going to add an, a volume and then import an open VDB. So if you go down to your downloads folder, then when you can see all the ground explosion files, press A to select everything, and then press import open VDB volume. You'll see nothing for a start because the first frame of the uh, animation is actually sort of empty. But if you scroll along the timeline, you should see, let's just zoom out a little bit. You should see um, this sort of explosion happening here. Right, this is actually going to be a bit too big for us, so I'm going to just scale it down. So press S on your keyboard, then type in 0 0.09. That makes it a bit more of a, a life size scale. Okay, so as it stands, the, um, the simulation doesn't have any material, so we're going to add a material to it. So just create a new material. And we'll call this um, explosion. Um, and if you click on this little cloud icon, uh, which tells you about the the VDB, you'll see it's got two grids. One's called density, and one's called flames. These are basically sort of different parts of the simulation that we can target with the material. So if you go to your shading editor, you'll see that the material that's been added is actually a principled volume shader because it knows that this is a volume. So we're just going to make some tweaks to this. So we're just going to change the density to 0 0.02, increase the black body intensity to 1, uh, and we'll set the temperature to 500. And actually, instead of temperature down here, it needs to say flames. Let's go into a different view so we can actually see this. So we'll pop into the, uh, the rendered view over here. We'll change this to cycles. Uh, GPU compute. Uh, let's change the maximum samples to 32. That should be enough for us. Click denoise to be on. And if you look under the render settings where it says denoise, also make sure it says use GPU, otherwise your, your render will be slower than it needs to be. So now if we kind of scroll through this, you can see we've already got the makings of a great looking explosion. I'm just going to press N on the keyboard. So we can see this little side menu. And we're just going to move the location of this. Let's press 1 on the number pad. Let's just move the location of this up. So it's kind of level with the, the sort of the, the floor of our Blender scene. Okay, so that's the basics of opening your VDB simulation. What we'll do from here, we'll add in a little car scene just to have something fun to look at. If you don't already have Blender Kit, it's free to download. You go to this website here, I'll pop a link in the description down below. Blender Kit's just a great place to get loads of free uh, models, uh, HDRIs, and materials from it. It's well worth having in your Blender toolkit, and they offer a paid membership as well to access all the materials and models. Even the free version has tons and tons of free stuff, so it's really great to get you started. So in Blender Kit, you can actually just search for a model. Let's search for a Ferrari for a start. And if you just change the search filter so it says free first, all the free assets come up first. I think we'll choose this nice Ferrari F50. So just click and drag it onto your scene. Uh, if you just click, all of the um, model is attached to this empty. So you can actually just grab the empty and that moves the model around. So we're just going to rotate that on the Z axis, uh, type Z minus 90. No, got that wrong. 
type R to rotate Z 180 and there we go we've got it facing to the right that's what we want so the next thing we're going to do is add a road so again let's search for a road in blender kit okay this one here called procedural road looks great we'll drag and drop that down onto here as well uh, let's just change the viewport mode with the road selected press tab to go into edit mode let's press 7 on the number pad and we'll see this from the top view so this road is procedural, so it's kind of made from all of these different control points. You can select them by dragging and then press G to grab. We don't need these two middle control points, so we're going to select those and we'll press X to delete the vertices. These two, I'm going to select the first one. I'm just going to rotate it so it's level like that. R to rotate and just move your mouse till it's level. And then what we'll do, we'll make the road a bit longer. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, press G to grab and just pull the road so it's basically it does it's not crucial you can just eyeball this so it goes about that far right now we're going to actually keyframe the car so zoom in so you've got the empty selected on the car or you can just click up here in the scene collection and select the uh, the empty there seven for top view i'm going to Press items just so I can see where the location of the car is. I'm going to press G to grab. We're going to move the car here roughly so it says, let's go for minus 50 up here on the X location. Set your keyframe, your playback keyframe over here to zero. Then we're going to press K for location. Insert a location keyframe. We're going to scroll all the way to frame 200. Um, we could do this a different way. We'll move the X location of the car up to about, uh, let's go to about 100, 100 meters, something around there. And then we'll press K again, and we're going to set another location keyframe. And you'll see now that the car moves between those two locations. Um, the other thing we want at the minute, the, these keyframes will be set so the car starts off slowly and then it accelerates. Let me just zoom in a bit closer so you can see that a bit clearer. So as you can see, the car starts off slowly and then accelerates. For the purposes of this video, we don't want that. So I'm going to press A, make sure all those keyframes are selected, they should turn yellow. And then I'm gonna press it, T for interpolation. And instead of Bezier, I'm going to set it to linear. And now you should be able to see when, we, when the car accelerates, it goes at a constant speed right through the animation. So the other thing I'm going to do, let's just get this here. So we'll set, we're just going to move this uh, volume. I'm going to move it so it's in front of the car, about there. So we can actually see the car drive through the explosion as it goes off. Okay, let's get a camera in this scene. Move your viewport so it's just sort of in front of the car like this. We're going to press Shift A and we're going to add in a camera. And then we're going to press Control, Alt and Zero on the number pad. And that basically matches the camera to the viewport. And then if you press Shift and tilde, you can actually move the camera with the mouse. So we're going to move it just here. I think maybe we'll rotate it as well on the y-axis. Uh, maybe this way, have a bit of a Dutch angle on it. Let's just move that camera a bit better. Okay, so now if we hop back into rendered view. Ah, it's very dark. Let's add some light to this scene. So we'll do that with a HDRI. Again, in Blender Kit, click on the HDRI tab. Let's search for this one called Sunset Over Clouds. And we'll just drag and drop that one in. Uh, this You can choose the resolution of the HDRI here. If you've got a slow computer, choose sort of, you know, one of these lower resolutions on the left. But if you've got a reasonably fast computer, 4096 should be fine. That adds a touch of light to the scene. We want it to be quite dark because I want the explosion to, to really stand out. So we're going to rotate the HDRI. In fact, let's make it a touch darker. So let's set this to point 0.2. And then if you roll down this little arrow here, and then roll down this next little arrow here under the HDRI settings, 
you should see this rotation menu and let's rotate the HDRI around a bit. So now from the camera view, we're just getting a hint. That's quite nice. Let's just see if the, that's nice. Right, I think this car needs some lights. So let's uh, change the viewport mode to um, the viewport shading. With the car selected, you can press the period key on your number pad to zoom into the car. Uh, let's select those headlights. They're kind of headlight covers. So let's select those and press X and we'll delete those. And then with the actual headlight bulb selected, we're going to give those a different material. So um, you can delete those two materials that are on it. We'll have a new material called emission. And we'll change the surface from principal BSDF to emission. And we'll set the strength to about a thousand. Right, now if we go back to cycles mode, you can see we've got some nice looking headlights now on the car. Great. Right, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to have the camera so it moves along with the car. So with the camera selected first, hold down your shift key and then click on the empty of the car. And then press control and P. And we're going to set the parent of the camera to be the car. So now you'll see if you look at the camera here, you'll see as the car moves, the camera also moves. So now you can see as we play the animation back in cycles, you can see the car actually coming through the explosion. That looks great, really dramatic. I think one of the things we're lacking is a bit of shake on the camera. So there's this great add-on for Blender, it's free, it's built into Blender. It's called Camera Shakeify. Uh, I'll pop a link again down below, but you can install this through the, the Blender extensions quite easily. With your camera selected, you can see Camera Shakeify, and we're going to add a Shakeify preset, and we're going to do the one that says Out Car Window. So this basically now will add a bit of a wobble to the camera, as though it's going high speed trying to keep up with the car. If you haven't saved your work yet, this is the time to do it. Press Control S and save your Blender file. A couple more tweaks then to finish off. So let's just go to your render settings where it says color management. We're going to sit, set the look to medium high contrast. Uh, in the compositor, we're going to add a little bit of glow. So let's just render one of these frames. So in the compositor, we're going to press shift A and we're going to search for a glare node. And we're going to change it from streaks to bloom. But just the strength down a bit because I don't want it to be too overpowering. So just a little bit of bloom gives a nice glow around the headlights. Also under where it says the render properties, we're just gonna make sure motion blur is turned on. And I'm just gonna tweak the position of the camera just to be a bit lower, just to make it slightly more dramatic. Okay, I think that works really well. Let's get this rendered out and see what it looks like. So for your render settings, um, I'm gonna set the last frame to be 150. Set, choose an output folder. Set your file format to MPEG video. You can change the encoding as well. Uh, MPEG4 is very compatible and output quality can be perceptually lossless. Remember to save it before you hit render and then go to render animation.